drugs and action be taken to entice and ensure young people go into trades uh, through apprenticeships, uh, given the de deficit that exists, and if college placements will be made available in a timely fashion and closer to home, and if ad additional night classes will be introduced locally to facilitate young people who, who, who wish to go into the trades. There is an urgent need for pla block players, plasterers, electricians, plumbers, mechanics, drivers, be the uh, commercial or, or, or uh, construction uh, drivers um, and uh, call, uh, people with culinary skills for hotels and, and so on. Minister. Thanks, thanks Deputy. Um, the number of apprentices in Ireland has grown significantly from 17,800 in 2019 to over 27,000 today. However, our priority consistent with Deputy Healy Ray's question is to make apprenticeships attractive for even more young people given our skills and workforce needs under priority government strategies. Our department's action plan for apprenticeship 2021 to 2025 aims to promote apprenticeship as a route to valuable qualifications and high quality jobs and careers. The National Apprenticeship Office is continuing to work with the Institute of Irish Guidance Councillors to promote and increase awareness of apprenticeship in schools and with parents. The World Skills Ireland, sponsored by our department, is promoting skills-based careers and apprenticeship to over 30,000 second-level students from across the country. The National Apprenticeship Office's um, Facts, Faces and Features campaign highlighted the skills, talent and contributions made by female apprentices across Ireland also. Our department has developed and launched the Careers in Construction Action Plan in August of 2023, including what we termed Building Heroes peer-to-peer -peer social media campaign to change the perception of careers in construction and a documentary of a day in the life of construction apprentices will be distributed to second level schools across the country. Apprenticeship scheduling is carried out on a national basis by coordinating providers and all efforts are made to schedule apprentices to their nearest available training location. If this is not possible, they will be called to the next nearest available location. Apprentices are in full-time employment. Employers commit to release the apprentice for the off-the-job training, either on block or day release, so no evening provision is um, catered for in those circumstances at the moment, Deputy. Exist with the uh, uh, college placements, and uh, I'll give you an example of one uh, young fellow from Glyn Flesk. He has to wait now approximately mid-late 18 months for a college placement. Himself and others are finding this very disheartening, resulting in some of them giving up on their course, moving jobs and even immigrating. I, I can I ask if something can be done to speed up this waiting time, especially in view of the fact that the country is crying out for, for uh, tradespeople. You see, um, the, what they're finding is when they do get a college placement, they uh, have to travel, say, some place like Waterford, mid term or maybe Limerick, and there is no accommodation available. So what I'm asking here clearly is, can he ensure that night courses be put uh, in place for some of these people to ensure that they don't have to travel these awful distances and to sh ensure that they stay in the trades that they began their apprenticeship in? Otherwise, they're leaving the country and is posing a, a, a serious difficulty. Many of them are not finishing doing the, the apprenticeship. And the course now, instead of taking four years, is taking six years or more for some of them. Minister, this isn't good enough. Thank you, Deputy. And nothing wrong with Waterford. What? Nothing uh, thanks, thanks, with Deputy. And we're, we're aware of the, uh, we've spoken about it um, in, in earlier exchanges with other deputies, we're aware of the challenges and we're aware of the backlogs and we've put significant um, resources into dealing with the backlog and the backlog is falling um, significantly and we'll continue to work on that. And I do appreciate what you've raised in relation to um, people having to travel distances to their training centres um, and that's something that we're working on too because we're putting huge resources into um, developing more training centres and hiring more instructors and tutors and I, I just want to make reference to because you've, you've asked in your primary question in relation to night classes and just to say that apprenticeship programmes require the apprentice to be in full-time employment with 
the sponsoring company. In order for the company to be registered as an approved employer, they undertake a commitment to release the apprentice for their off-the-job training, which is held in either a, an education and training board or an institute of technology or a technological university as a daytime programme. So owing to the structure of the programme and the agreement of the employer to release the apprentice to attend Thank training, there is no evening provision um, available for any of the off-the-job phases at the Thank moment. Minister. I only asked that question, Minister, because I thought it might help. Uh, and you see, it, it is a fact that these young fellows are giving up, and I've even had employers on to me, see what's wrong, why can't we hurry on the college placements, because it is delaying their, uh, their, their uh, apprenticeship and, and it is, uh, you know, uh, how to say, making their course a way longer. And, and uh, employers need them. And wh what happens then if they, this fellow is, is he going to be waiting 18 months? He was told a month ago he'll be waiting 18 months. That's, that's, that's not good enough, Minister. And you're going to lose them. We're going to lose them. And as I said, we do need all these people, young people, and we, we can't afford to see them immigrating uh, to, to other countries and, uh, where, where maybe they'll get their uh, apprenticeship and become qualified away easier. So I'm asking you, please, to ensure that this doesn't continue and that this problem is sorted out. We appreciate the fact that more young people are, are going for the trades because we certainly do need them. A lot of the fellows that we have are getting older, more out, and there's many fellows working now uh, at 70 years of age Thank that you. are not able for it. So we're asking you, please, to hurry on this uh, and deal with this problem. Thank Thanks. Uh, look, I, I, think it's, I think it's a suggestion that you make that has merit in it. And it's certainly something that um, we'll highlight within our department. But as I said to you earlier, bear in mind, we've increased the capacity um, of the state to deliver off-the-job training. And that came at a cost. And there are challenges in relation to that in terms of recruiting um, adequate tutors and um, trainers, uh, suitably qualified people. And they were asked to take on uh, additional, um, additional workload to their credit, uh, which they did, to address the backlog issue, and certainly asking them uh, going a step further to do it out of hours, out of regular hours, shall I say, in the evening time, uh, would be a big change to them. But it's something that we can certainly discuss. I can't give you a commitment here now in relation to it, but thank you for raising it. It's an interesting suggestion.